Hi everyone, my name is Christine and I want to thank you for joining us today on our 30-day growth challenge devotions. Yesterday, we learned in James chapter 2 verses 1 through 4 that our faith is a tied to how we treat others and that God is not pleased with discrimination and favoritism. Today, we're going to pick up on verse 5 and it reads, Listen to me, dear brothers and sisters. Hasn't God chosen the poor in this world to be rich in faith? Aren't they the ones who will inherit the kingdom he promised to those who love him? But you dishonor the poor. Isn't it the rich who oppress you and drag you into court? Aren't they the ones who slander Jesus Christ, whose noble name you bear? Yes, indeed, it is good when you obey the royal law found in the scriptures. Love your neighbor as yourself. But if you favor some people over others, you're committing a sin and you're guilty of breaking the law. So I want to share um, three insights that I received in this portion of scripture. Let's break down and start with verse 5, where he says, James is, is telling the church, Listen to me, dear brothers and sisters. Hasn't God chosen the poor in this world to be rich in faith? Aren't they, the poor he's referring to, the ones who will inherit the kingdom he promised to those who love him? Insight number one, one can be poor in this world, but yet truly be rich. How is this? See, God has chosen people who realize their need for him to be rich in faith. This portion of scripture says that he's chosen the poor in this world to be rich in faith. See, the world's perspective of poor is having no money, no material possessions, but this is actually backwards. The kingdom perspective of poor is having no faith, no salvation, and no inheritance. See, the world's perspective of rich is money, material possessions, and success. But the kingdom perspective of rich is rich in faith, having an inheritance in the kingdom of God. See, there are things that are far more valuable than worldly possessions. There are things that money cannot buy. There are people in this world that have money, that have success, that have worldly materialistic things, but there are things in their life that they don't have, which is lack of joy, lack of peace. Verse five goes on to say, aren't they, referring to the poor, the ones who will inherit the kingdom he promised to those who love him? Because it's through faith that we become sons and daughters of God and sons and daughters of, of God receive an inheritance. Matthew 6, 10, Jesus taught us to pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And the kingdom of God is our inheritance. And that's not an inheritance that we receive only when we make it to heaven. That's an inheritance we can receive here and now this is how we become truly rich, rich in faith to receive our inheritance. Our inheritance is love, joy, peace, hope, prosperity, abundance, healthy relationships, purpose, fulfillment, satisfaction. As a matter of fact, J Jesus said in John 10:10, 10, 10, I have come to give you a rich and satisfying life. That is the true definition of rich. It's satisfaction and fulfillment that can only be found in faith in Jesus Christ. You can be truly rich and live a satisfying life when you're rich in faith, and that's faith in Christ Jesus. God wants us to live this rich and satisfying life so that we can give it to others. We can share what he's given us with others. Whatever he gives us, he gives us joy, we share it with others. He gives us peace, we share it with others. He gives us hope, we share it with others. He gives us financial increase, we share it with others. That's what it means to be truly rich. Insight number two, those who love God and will inherit the kingdom of God are the true rich ones. The richest person among us isn't the one with the, with the greatest amount of money. The richest person among us is the one with the greatest amount of faith, the greatest amount of joy, love, peace, prosperity, all that the kingdom has made available to us. 
Don't be rich in the natural, but poor in the spiritual. That means don't be rich in monetary things, but poor in faith. Matthew 16, 26 says, For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world, wealth, fame, success, but forfeits his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? So let's continue. James continues his teaching in this portion of scripture, reprimanding on the topic of prejudice and discrimination. In light of this, let's continue looking at verse 6 through 9. Verse 6, but you dishonor the poor. Isn't it the rich who oppress you and drag you into court? Aren't they the ones who slander Jesus Christ, whose noble name you bear? Yes, indeed, it's good when you obey the royal law as found in the scripture, love your neighbor as yourself. But if you favor some people over others, you're committing sin and guilty of breaking the law. See, this is my third insight. It's really a question of introspection. Ask yourself, how do I see people? How do I see people? Do I see them the way that God sees them? Or do I see them the way that the world sees them? 1 Samuel 16, verse 7, God said, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. I pray that this, this correction from James, this chastisement, makes us do some self-inventory on how do we see others because the way that the world sees as rich is not what's truly rich and the way that the world sees as poor is not what's truly poor we have to make sure that we're seeing through god's perspective that we're valuing people the way that he values them may we live may we have god's heart and God's vision and see life through the perspective of the kingdom and not the world. I pray that you receive something from this devotional today and let me pray our prayer of blessing over you. Father, I thank you for each person that is studying your word today, that you would continue to give us divine revelation, that you would show us, Father God, how to have your perspective, the perspective of the kingdom and not the physical, Lord. Let us love people and see people the way that you do, you do, Father God. Thank you for everything that you've showed us today. Continue to reveal your truths to us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. Thank you and have a wonderful day.